Welcome you to In The Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. We're so excited to be here with you guys on this evening. I tell you, we're just uh, having a spillover from the last two Saturdays uh, with the live radio broadcast with WJMS. And it's just been so exciting. Uh, we've been just uh, talking to countless people about the radio uh, interview uh, that we have for the last two weeks. And it's just been a phenomenal blessing uh, for our lives and the lives of the listeners. And so you can see the, the joy, the excitement uh, on my face as to where we're going with this ministry, uh, with this gift of In the Blender. And I tell you, it's just it's phenomenal. It's fascinating, exciting. All of those different adjectives that would describe uh, what we believe and what we feel and what we know uh, this to be accomplishing in the land. And so we just want to thank you all for tuning in. Thank Again, we welcome you to In the Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. And I tell you, it's just uh, such a phenomenal blessing to be with you. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, we're not going to go into a new topic. We want to re well, we want to do something a little different. We want to recap the last two Saturday broadcasts uh, that we had with WJMS. So we're going to be doing a recap of those uh, for those of you that weren't able to uh, be with us live on last Saturday or on the 15th. We're going to just discuss some of the topics uh, that we discussed on in the interview mm -hmm. with WJMS. And I tell you, it was exciting, just the lives. Even It was, it was such a blessing, even on last Saturday, uh, Jamie's father called in mm -hmm. and chimed in on uh, in the blender. And I tell you, it, it, it's, it's something when the father of the owner of the station wants to call in and give his input and his thankfulness for what we're doing within the blender. And so we're just super excited uh, to be sharing with you guys and to share uh, our lives with you uh, in expectation that you would be doing have all that God desired for you to be doing have. So, sweetheart, let's get some statistics uh, as we always do. Okay. 23% of adults who are presently married have been married before. About 42 million adults in the U.S. have been married more than once. That's up to 22 million from 1980. Wow. 50% of the women and 30% of the men were still intensely angry with their former spouses. The children of divorce tended to do well if mothers and fathers, regardless of remarriages, resumed parenting roles, putting differences aside, and allowing the children continuing relationship with both parents. You know, these, these are some alarming statistics that you read. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at 50% of women and 30% of men who were who are still intensely angry with their former spouses. Why? Why are you still angry with the person that you're no longer with? Listen, it's over. And for most of you, thank God it's over. You know, but... Get rid of that anger because that's one of the things that's prohibiting you from being all that you can be mm -hmm. because you're walking in anger. Forgiveness is paramount. I don't care what transpired. I don't care what took place. You have to learn how to forgive. Uh, Pastor Brown all the way tuning in from Cancun. What's hey, up, Chris, Pastor what's going Brown? on? And so, mm -hmm. you know, you guys got to learn how to let this thing go, man. It's killing you. It's destroying you. It's not only destroying you, but it's destroying your family. A lot of you guys are in new marriages and new relationships. You're in another, you're in a blended relationship, a blended family, but you can't move on because you're harboring all this bitterness and anger towards that person that you were once married to. And so I want to encourage you before we go into this broadcast to let it go. Listen, I don't care what it feels like. I don't care. All of us got a story. Mm -hmm. All of us got something that, that transpired that we didn't like. And for some of us, we were the perpetrators. But at the end of the day, in order for you to move on, in order for you to, to receive all that you were designed to receive, especially as it relates to this blended family, you're going to have to let those things go. And so I just wanted to just touch on that just a little bit. Um, and also, the children of divorce tend to do well if the mothers and fathers, regardless if they're remarried or not, resume parenting roles. Listen. Don't make your child the object of your frustration. 
Don't make the child the object of your anger, the object of your disappointment, the object of your letdown. Don't, don't make that child that object. What you should do is use that as a catapult, as a catalyst, now as restoration, as healing. Mm -hmm. Because what you do, that child most likely will repeat. Let me say that again. What you do, that child most likely will repeat. Mm -hmm. My pastor normally says it like this. More is caught than taught. And so a lot of times we say things to our kids, but then we do the direct opposite of it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to show your child healing, if you want to show your child deliverance and forgiveness and growth and maturity, then that's something that you're going to have to present before them, even in what you've been through, even in what you're going through. And so we want to make sure we just, I, I, I just want to make sure I touched on a couple of those statistics because those were alarming. I mean, I don't even know if we shared these statistics before. No, these are new. They're brand new statistics. And I'm saying every week we run across something that's just like, wow, I can't believe it's like that. And so that's the ultimate goal of In The Blender is so that we can make sure that we attack a lot of these statistics. There are some great statistics as it relates to blended families and remarriage. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of statistics that are just alarming, man, that's just like so disappointing and so mind-blowing that we have to attack and we have to share with you mm -hmm. so that when we start presenting information to you, you'll know why we present it, and then you'll know how you can utilize that information to now bless your family and your household. So we're going to talk about some of the things we discussed uh, in the last two broadcasts. Uh, one of the things was, what are some of the best practices to make sure everyone feels included? That was one of the questions that was presented mm -hmm. to us. What are some of the best practices to make sure everyone feels included? And so what we said was, listen, get a game night. Yep. Do family meetings. Outings. Outings. Movies, Movies. Uh, uh, trips, trips. We used to like to cook out, man. You talk yeah. about the, the girls used to love to cook out. I mean, we every we almost cooked every out like weekend every weekend. Yeah. Sometimes almost every day we were cooking out, but it included everybody. Everybody had a role to play. Somebody fixed something. Somebody prepared something. Somebody set up something. Yeah. And so it made everybody all inclusive to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And so those are some of the best practices. Find out what everybody likes to do and then just do it. Yep. You want to know what the best practice is? Ask your family what they like to do. Yep. If they yep. like to just sit down and watch a movie together or watch a TV yep. program together, then make that a best practice. Yep. If they like to read together, if they like to do Bible study, make that a best. Listen, there's so many things that you can do as a best practice or best practices that if you would just start one, Yep. You'll find it's much easier to do two, three, four, five, and if not more. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage you to sit down with your family, talk with them, uh, find out what they like, what they don't right. like, right. and then start making some of those things best practices. Yep. One of the other questions was, what if the siblings really do not get along and it's not improving? Well, I can't really talk too much about that one because they got along. Right. Now, of course, we know that there are some instances where siblings don't get along. But again, sit down with them and find out why they're not getting along. Yep. There are many reasons as to why siblings don't get along, especially in their blend, because we're talking about the blended family dynamic. Right. There are plenty of reasons why they don't get along, but it behooves you to find out why. That's when family meetings become important. Exactly. You sit down and you put it all out on the table. And then there are times when a family meeting has the... There are personal meetings that have to go beyond the family yep. meetings. Yep. There's one-on-one -on -one -on -one time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. what, what did you used to do with one-on-ones, babe? You said, what did I used to do? Yeah. What do you mean? I mean, how did you used to attack one-on-ones? Oh, just individually. Sit down with each one, one at a time, and find out how each one was feeling. Gather all that together and work towards what each one said. And then you bring them together to um, find out how they all, you know, going to handle what each other said. Exactly. And so I, I asked her because she had plenty of experience in dealing with one-on-one -on -one meetings, especially as related to the girls. And mm -hmm. so if you want to find out why they're not getting along, if they're not getting along, have your family meetings, but then have one-on-ones. -on -one one -on yeah. Because it's important. There are some things that children are going to share with you individually that they may not share in the group. 
And it don't have to be like a sit down type one on one meeting. It could be where you take that one and you guys are going out, just the two of you. You can go out to eat. Just anything where it's just you and that person. It don't have to be a sit down at the table kind of meeting. Any time, any type of, you know, um, environment where it's just you and that one person. Exactly. So. Is that, is, hey, listen, you want to get something out of them, go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that too. You'll find a whole lot out when you go shopping. So, I mean, there are plenty of ways that you can find out the exact reason why they, uh, yeah. they're not get, if they're not getting along, why they're not getting along. And then ask God for wisdom on how to bring those yeah. things together. Yeah. Because there are some yeah. things that you may hear that they may share with you that you may just not know exactly what to do or how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so there's the, there's where the wisdom of God comes in because he'll give you that wisdom through mm -hmm. and by Holy Spirit that allow you to now minister to your family so that you all could be on the same page and on one accord. One of the other yeah. ones was, uh, what do your kids have to say about what the hardest part of having new siblings was? Again, mm -hmm. I don't know too much about that one. With my family, I know a lot about it in my family, my extended family, because we have, I have a lot of blended families within my extended family. Right. But one of the things, it was a, we made having another sibling a joy. Right. One of the things I'm finding out is most people aren't sitting down and presenting the new siblings as a joy. Mm-hmm. When you, when you make it exciting, because my girls never, they, my girls didn't have a brother. And so for they them, the idea of yeah. them having a brother was exciting. was exciting, especially a baby brother, a younger brother. Uh -huh. It was exciting because now, you know, there were things that they wanted to do concerning him. There was things that they wanted to say concerning him. And it just made it such an exciting thing. And it was exciting for my son as well, because in, in his family dynamics, he was the oldest. Right. His mom had other children after him. Right. And so for him to have older siblings... It was a joy for him because it's a pressure off of yeah. him. Now, he didn't have to be the one that made sure everything was done, to make sure that everybody was taken care of. Now, he could sit back and, and enjoy yeah. uh, some of the fruits of other people's labor, so to say. And so you have to make sure that, you, that your presentation as it relates to the children are on point. Mm -hmm. Because when you do that, when you really focus in on doing that, you'll cut down on a lot of these things. Because now it's a joy to have a new sibling. Right. And, and right. not a terror. Right. And, the, you know, another one was, what are some of the tips to making a blended family work? Secret insider info. We got any secret we insider gave, info? We gave quite a few of those. Um, love, patience, unity, respect, communication, togetherness. One of the bigger things we had said was forgiveness. Asking for forgiveness and be willing to forgive. Exactly. Because in a blended family, guess what? There are going to be a lot of things that you do that you wish you didn't have, you wish you wouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. There are going to be some things that you said that you wish you didn't have said. That yep. you would not have said. Or didn't say. Let me get that right. Mm -hmm. There are some things that you mm -hmm. may have said that you wish you didn't say. And so it's going to be important that you guys make sure that forgiveness is paramount. And watch what you say, because once you say it, you cannot take it back. That's one of the things we had to learn. We had to learn to examine that word. One, one of the things that I would say to my wife, and she would say to me, we would say to each other is, just because it came to your mind, don't give your mouth a right to speak it. And a lot of times, people don't understand, just because something pops up in your mind as it relates to your family, especially mm -hmm. in intense times, yes. that doesn't give you a legal right to say what you want to say. Paul said it like this. All things are lawful, but not all oh, things are expedient. Exactly. You got to understand, everything you say isn't going to be beneficial just because you feel like you want to say it. Yeah, like uh, Dr. Mike said one time, it was mainly trying to, it was saying about women, but it really worked for everybody. Learn, what is it, the power of shut up? Yes. <laughs> the, power, the power of shut up is, is, is powerful. <laughs> That's a powerful tool to use. My, my wife learned that power, man. It was like, it was some times where I would, I would say some things. And she will rear up the, the, to make a comeback, and she just shut her mouth. And it was so powerful because it diffused anything that could have escalated. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we got to learn some things just not even worth saying. Yep. Yep. Because once you say it, you can't take you it back. You cannot take it back. Words are spirit. 
they either bring life or they bring death. Yep. The Bible says it like this. Life and death is in the power, power of the tongue. Of the tongue. Them yes. that love it, they're what? They eat the fruit of it. Yep. And so you got to be careful, especially in this blended family dynamic, yeah. that you want to make sure that you're eating good fruit. Right. A lot of people are eating fruit that's sour, that's bitter, that's, that's rotten. Why? Most of it is coming because of what you're saying. You have to make sure that you monitor what you say, right. how you say it, and even when you say it. Right. Because a word spoken out of season is just as bad as a word spoken ill favor. Yep. Yep. Some things you say that just not even a time to say it. You got to know when not even. You know what? I shouldn't even say it at that particular well, that time. Mean, slow to slow to speak, quick to listen. Quick to listen, slow to speak. And so we want to just make sure that we share this with you guys. Uh, what advice can you give to couples just starting down this path? Seek counseling. Say that again, sweetheart. Seek counseling. Seek counseling. Listen, there's some things going into this blended family, man. If you don't seek counseling, it's you're going to have a hard time. You're going to really have a hard time because guess what? There's, there's systems. My wife had a system. I had a system. My girls had a system. My son had a system. We try to bring four systems together and never mm -hmm. took the time to find out how those systems were operating. Right. And that's what counseling does. Counseling reveals how systems work. Mm -hmm. And once you find out how those systems work, then guess what? Now you can begin to work things out in your family without having a bunch of hiccups. Right. Let me say that again. Once you find out how those systems work, now you can work things out in your family without having a lot of hiccups. Mm -hmm. Most of you guys are facing a lot of hiccups because you haven't had proper counseling. This was we our faced family. a lot of hiccups because we didn't have proper counseling. That's what I was getting ready to say. I'm, <laughs> listen, you guys want to hear our counseling session? This was our counseling session. Do you love her? Yes. Do you love him? Yes. <laughs> that was our counseling session. Yeah, we like, oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh. We both looked at each other like, well, we just going like, to have to Okay, play. cool. <laughs> Good, man. Let's do this. Because that was our, we had no clue what we were getting ourselves into. No understanding of how to navigate it. Again, this is a woman that raised her oldest daughter at the particular time was 16, 15? 16. 16. Well, 15 when we was getting ready to get started. Well, we no, actually she talked was about 16. It. 16. And so she was turning 17. It was, the, they were 10, 13, and 16. So she had a 10-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 16-year-old. Mm-hmm. So she had experience on being a parent. At that particular time, I had a two-year-old with no experience because he was in Florida with his mom. And so I was clueless as it related to uh, raising children, mm -hmm. as related to dealing with children. And then I had some other issues that I didn't even, I suppressed so badly that when I finally became a parent, man, those things just exploded. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that on another broadcast because you guys definitely want to hear about my issues. Man, you know what I'm saying? It was the woman with the issue of blood, but boy, I had some serious issues myself. And so it was important. It's important to seek counseling. It's important it to is. seek guidance, direction. Right. And so we want to make right. sure that you want to know uh, uh, the best advice we can give you starting off? Seek counseling. Yeah. Or, or at least ask questions from those that have already walked that course and, you know, have successfully done it. Exactly. You know, ask questions. Don't be ashamed to ask questions. That's right, because I was you always know? told growing up that the only dumb question is the you one that asked. Yeah. That's yeah. the only dumb question. If you don't ask, you don't know. Exactly. And there's, there's and a lot of things that we don't know, right. especially as it relates to the blended family, we are clueless about. Yep. And if you don't ask... This is not the military, don't ask, don't tell. Guess what? You ask, we're going to tell you. Right. And that's why we're here, because we want to share with you everything that we know, everything that we've experienced, everything that we've learned, so that you can be the better in your blended family. Right. Because there are a lot of things that we've experienced and we've dealt with and we've learned and we've gotten understanding about. Right. That if you would listen and if you would apply it, I yep. promise you, your house will be better, your marriage will be better. And then taking taking that experience and putting it with the word, it's a win win. Win win. <laughs> I, I was going to share a quick testimony. Well, one of, one of my buddies uh, who's in a blended family, we've been we've been ministered to him him and his wife 
wow, for over 10 years. And some things that they were dealing with in the dynamic of the blended family, well, guess what? They found me in the process of purchasing their first home. But the reason why they didn't purchase their first home, why? Was because there were issues in that blended family that prohibited them from moving to that next level. Mm -hmm. And now they're so excited, man, to now finally just take what we've been telling them all these years and, now, and, and applying it. And now finally applying the things that we've been sharing with them for years. I'm not talking about one year, two years, three years. I'm talking about over 10 years we've been pouring into them, uh, sharing information as related mm -hmm. to the blended family, how you can make it work, uh, how to deal with each other, how to love up on each other, how to communicate. Right. And they finally got to the point where they bought to purchase their first home. I'm telling you, it's nothing like it. And so we're excited about that. What, in your opinions, are the foundations of a blended family? And how do you establish them? What, in your opinions, are the foundations of a blended family? My foundations is Christ, the yep. solid rock. Yep. That's my foundation. <laughs> That's it. You want to know the foundation of a blended family? That's the foundation. Yep. For God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son that if we just believe on him, we shall not perish but have everlasting life. He sent his son not into this world to condemn it, but through him the world might be saved. That's the foundation. There's no better foundation than the chief cornerstone, exactly. the rock of ages, the rock of my salvation. You want to know the foundation? That's the foundation. Every All other ground, the, the song says, is sinking sand. So a lot of you guys, you're trying to build this, this, this family dynamic on, on the barbershop and the beauty salon mm. and, and, and your Uncle Jojo and your Aunt, and your Aunt Maybell and all those who haven't even had success in marriage let alone relationship, and you're building that foundation on things that they're telling you, but you haven't begun to seek the, the rock of our mm -hmm. salvation. You haven't begun mm -hmm. to seek the rock of ages. And so when you want to talk about what are the foundations of the blended family, that's the foundation. Because guess what? He went to his own, his own received or not. And so he opened up his arms for us who were the Gentiles to come on in and be a part of that family. What other blended family is there than the body of Christ. Yeah, boy. What other blended family is there than the body of Christ? So all we're doing in this blended family dynamic is really showing the world what God intended for the world yeah. to see through through salvation. And that's a blended family. Yeah. And so if you want to know what are, in our opinion, are the foundations, those are the foundations. Yep. And then coupled with a strong unity in marriage. Love. Openness. Yep. Commitment. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Cause dedication. That, dedication. Consistency. Yes, consistency. That's big. That's it, you know, I mean. Understand it. Yeah. No, watch this. I, I got this from a man, John and Ebony. Them are partners right there. Commitment versus contract. Yeah. Covenant versus contract. Understanding that, guess what? This is a covenant. It's not a contract. See, most of you are going to get into this dynamic, into this relationship, thinking it's a contract. And so guess what? In a contract, you can grab the paper and you can do this with a contract. Rip it up. You can rip it up. And a lot of you, that's what you're doing to your families right now. You're ripping them up. Because you're looking at, you're looking at this blended family as a contract. You're looking at this relationship and this dynamic as a contract. Not understanding that it's a covenant. To death do you part. Right. This is a blood covenant. We've entered into this to become one. And so it's important to understand those things. Society doesn't always acknowledge blended families. So research and therapy sometimes does. Research, research and therapy is, is what you're going to need. Because guess what? Society don't acknowledge blended families. This is what society does. Society talks about step families. Step, step. Don't never, listen. As long as you live in don't you ever let me hear you call your child a stepchild anymore. Right. Let me say that again. As long as you living, don't you ever call that child a stepchild anymore. It this is my wife. Vision. That's right. She's not my stepwife. I'm not her stephusband. So We're husband did, and wife. Yeah. So, so where did they, what, wonder why that happened anyway? Where did that, we need to research, like, why did they start calling the children stepchildren? If it's like your wife or your husband, you know, you remarried, 
why was it that the children are called step? You know where that came from? <laughs> that came from some idiot that didn't love that, them children. Let me say it like that. That's where that came from. So now you wanted to put a title on them that brought about division and separation. Because that's what it does. Because that's all it does. See, when you say step, you're not saying we're one. When you say step, you're not saying we're a unit. Right. When you say step, you're not saying that we're... Guess it's what? It's al already a separation. It's already a separation. A and the only steps that you should have in your house are the ones that lead up to the front door and the ones that go upstairs into your bedroom and downstairs to your basement. They're the only steps you should have in your house. But as it relates to human beings in your household, there should be no steps. Right. right. I wish my wife would say, come here, step husband. <laughs> <laughs> See how stupid that sound? That yeah. sound dumb, don't it? Yeah. But we got the audacity to say that to children. You, you my step. That's my stepdaughter. That's my stepson. Let me get off of that. It already that, make yeah. them feel like they ain't apart. Yeah, but that, that get so. my that get my uh my, my blood yeah. going. So <laughs> we we gonna move on that. How do we combat that? And where can we find answers? When or if there are any? So we just gave you answers. Don't say it no more. Yeah, that's it. How did you handle, now this was a good one, I, I, oh my God, oh, time man. is running out, yeah. but this was a good one. How did you handle the first time each of you had something negative to say about the other's, the other's child? Not very well back then. <laughs> Not very well back then. Don't say nothing about my children. <laughs> and mm, he tried, he tried it. Oh my God. But he goodness. learned real quick, don't oh my do that. God. You talk about somebody, baby. Oh my goodness! That, let me tell you something right now. I, I had to. I, I forgot that that my wife come from a large family. You, you, you remember the show Eight is Enough? Well, it was about eleven and then, so I totally forgot. Listen, you don't be talking about nobody kids. You know. You, <laughs> Oh my goodness. This is how we had it. One time, yo. Listen, it was hilarious. Uh, People get, listen, you want to get some of my panties in, in a bunch? Say something about their babies. I don't care if you married to them or not. When you say something about them babies, <laughs> <laughs> you got something on your hands. So, this is how we had it, though. We talked about it. Right. We discussed why why I said what I said and why she felt <laughs> why she felt the way she felt. So, oh man, you can see we had some funny times when it came around that subject. Yeah, but how yeah. did you first handle that? I, I, him, right, Madeline. That's right. Yeah, she checked me tomorrow. Yeah. Checked him. Boom, boom. Yeah. You know, I, I forgot her brother was a, a, a boxing champ. <laughs> No, but listen. But don't do that anyway, though. I mean, because sometimes people do that just to be <laughs> smart or just, you know, you're trying to, like, get somebody mad so you say something about that child. But you know what? I don't even think it was... <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't even think it was something like that. I just think it was an observation, and she was just lost no, it. She was like, no. what? Uh-uh. <laughs> no, it wasn't no observation. No, but you... serious, though. Some of you guys have observations. That you see concerning children, and you gotta be careful when you bring that observation to light, because everybody mm -hmm. can't handle that observation. I don't care how true and real it is. A lot of parents can't handle it because, in your eyes, that's your angel, that that's right. your, that's your boo boo, that's your pookie, whatever little nickname you've given that child. Mm -hmm. And so, as parents, you gotta be objective as it relates to things that someone says, because everything is a negative. Right. Everything wasn't right. designed to, to be a knock or to be an attack. Some things mm -hmm. are just observations that you got to be a mature enough to receive and handle. Right, right. <laughs> and I wasn't, I, I, I admit it, I wasn't mature enough back then. It had been me and them for all those years. You weren't going to come in here and just say anything about my children. Oh, my God. <laughs> but you learned real uh, quick, so we got yes. past that one real quick. Yes. So. <laughs> just keep it to myself. Keep I it to myself. Keep it to myself. Okay. Oh How does discipline work in your household? Listen, that's a whole other topic. We got to take a whole broadcast for that. You guys want to know about discipline? Well, finish family? reading this because we had had, how does discipline work in your household? Does the biological parent discipline their, dis discipline the children 
and and it was also another part to that if so um what is like the time frame or you know when can they or when should they so that'll be a good one that we'll pick back up on that exactly but yeah. I'll, I'll i'll say this real quick talk about it yeah discuss it Bef yeah before beforehand that. Um, one of the things that, that we fail to do is we fail to talk about it. Um, I, like I shared on Saturday, I came in gung-ho. Uh, my dad was like Clint Eastwood. As a matter of fact, Clint Eastwood is one of my father's favorite actors. And so my dad was like Clint Eastwood. Um, Heartbreak Ridge, that's for my boy Will. And so my dad was one of those disciplinarians where, especially when it came to cleaning, he would wear white, he would do the white glove test. Uh, we had a bunch of wood furniture in our household. And so I, every weekend I had to make sure that I polished them from top to bottom. That's, that's why we don't have a lot of furniture in my house now cause, because of that. Uh, but we still make sure it's polished and clean. But I don't have a whole lot because that's a whole lot that you got to do. And I just remember as a child that I had to do that. But I came in gung-ho, man, and I was clueless. I, I had no wisdom as related to that. And so you want to make sure you discuss who's going to be the disciplinary we would encourage that the biological parent starting off, especially right. be that disciplinarian because that's who the child is used to or the children are used to. Right. And so you want to make sure that you want to continue with that. And then over time, if it grows into a place where, you know, the blended parent can now be a disciplinarian, you make sure that it's discussed right. and that even the children know that that's what's now is going right. to be, you know, taking place so they don't throw them off as well. Exactly. Uh, what was the process like getting uh, to the to the discipline stage? Well, we'll talk well, about that along with that. All of that. Yeah, because the rest of these is about, um, that we had down is about discipline. So maybe we'll do discipline next week. Yeah, we'll talk we'll, about we'll that. We'll talk about that. That's a big we'll subject. Go into that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But listen, we, we love you guys. You're right, uh, Delta. We're going to discuss yes. that because that's big. Yes. Um, a, a, a lot of stuff, man. There, there were some things that we dealt with over discipline. Be, because of, of, of my ignorance and, and lack of understanding and knowledge that, like I was sharing with uh, one of the callers on Saturday, it could have broke the deal. Mm -hmm. There are some things, and we're going to talk about that too, sweetheart. Yeah. What are deal breakers and, and what are things break. that break the deal? Oh, man, I like That's that. Good. Because there are some things that, that you come into this relationship with that you say they're deal breakers. Right. But then there are some things that you encounter in this relationship that are that will that break, the, break deal, the deal right or that can break the deal and so we're going to talk about the deal breakers and those that break the deal or can break the deal and so we love you guys we thank you for tuning yeah, in to end our, the time is up. our time is up we're excited tell them how they can reach us sweetheart uh you can reach us via email at we are a blended family at gmail.com Say that again. We are a blended family at gmail.com listen next week we're going to talk about discipline we're going to talk about the stages of discipline, how you should discipline, when you should discipline, who should discipline. Uh, we're going to talk about upcoming. We're going to talk about deal breakers. Listen, you don't want to. There's so many things that we have to share with you guys. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. We might even start. We might even talk about uh, when you first mentioned something about that child. You see, that was big. That was a big pause that we had. And so, listen, we love you guys. We thank you for tuning in. We love Catch you, WJMS. God bless you all, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.